decided I'm going to be filming my go-to full glam dramatic makeup look. I've literally been wearing this so often. Anytime I have an event or if I just want to feel a little bit extra, then this is pretty much the exact makeup look that I go to. If you guys didn't know, this is actually the third time I've filmed in a week and I'm so proud of myself because I've been so super slack on my channel. If you guys do enjoy watching my videos, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also turn on the little bell button that I think is next to the subscribe button and that basically just gives you a notification when I post a video so you guys can be one of the first people to watch it. Without any further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. My favorite brow product to use at the moment is the Vanity Brow Cushion Duo. So this is their latest one. It's like the new brunette blonde shade. And one of the blondes is basically just a little bit lighter than it used to be. The brush that I'm using is my 317 Wing Liner Brush by Zoeva. And then I start working on the tail. So just following the natural shape of my brows. It's weird, but since I've had my hair darker, I find it so much more fun to fill my brows in because I can go that little bit darker and it just makes my like eyes stand out a lot more when I do my full glam makeup. The mailman just got here and I was waiting for a parcel and I'm like, shit, I'm filming in my auntie, so I just chuck some pants on really quickly and run out there. It's a package that I've been waiting for for so long. It's one of those name necklaces. I think I'm gonna put it on now because I really wanna see what it looks like. So it comes in like this little package here and it's from Missy Name Necklace. I'll link them down below. Now I'm just gonna conceal my brows using the Tarte Shape Tape. I'm so sad because I've nearly run out of this. But I think I wanna try the new Makeup Revolution one that everyone's like been raving about. Well, I don't know if it's new, but it's like the, the thing to rave about at the moment. I was watching a video the other day from Michael Finch and he did a full face of makeup using only the Jaclyn Hill palette. So literally foundation, everything he wore was from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. And I was like, that is so cool. But when he did it, he noticed that when he didn't use a concealer on his eyelids as like a primer, everything blended out so much smoother and it looked much nicer. Lately, whenever I use the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, I don't put concealer all over my eyelids to like conceal them anymore as like an eyelid primer because honestly, it blends out so much nicer when you don't do that. I've tried it with other palettes and it doesn't work. It's literally only the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. So what I would do is I'd grab like the color that is most similar to what my foundation's gonna be and kind of set my lid with that or the lightest color. and then after that I just start blending the shadows out on top of that. So all I'm gonna do is this is the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. I'm gonna mix the white shade here and this one here called Hazelnut. So I kind of mix them together and do like a base with those on my lid. I only just found out a couple of weeks ago that this palette actually tastes like chocolate as well. Not only does it smell like chocolate but if you end up having any in your mouth it tastes so good. I'm gonna take that shadow out quite far. Ah, uh, my lights just fell down. But the palette I'm mainly gonna be using today is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. Mine is such a dirty mess. The first shade that I'm gonna go in with is this one here. And I'm gonna take that on my Morphe M433 brush. Pack it on, tap off some excess, and then start putting that into my crease. On the weekend, I had a little night out and I met a couple of girls from the Gold Coast and a couple of really cool guys. And we had so much fun. We went out to like some clubs, which I literally haven't done for years and I had the best time and I wore this really beautiful dress. I don't know if any of you guys follow me on Instagram, but I posted it on there. It was so gorgeous and everyone really loved it. It was like a cute little black satin dress from Boohoo. All I'm doing is packing on more color into the crease and then sort of blending it out a little bit. I'm just gonna go over the edges of that now with my Morphe M441 brush. Just doing like little circular motions to sort of blend out that harsh edge we've got going on. Whenever I do full glam or any like really dramatic makeup looks, I pretty much always do my eyes first. So that way I can just kind of clean up afterwards underneath any fallout that I have. And then my foundation will be nice and fresh. Cause if you do it the other way around and you put your foundation on first you're going to end up with fallout all through it and it's just so much harder to clean up so a little tip for you guys always do your eye makeup first i just want to brighten up that color just a little bit more so now i'm going to take this brighter red shade here just on the same brush that i was using to start with the morphe m433 brush because we're going to be doing a cut crease today you really want to take the color from the outer corner all the way to the inner corner because the darker you have in your crease all over the lid the more your little cut crease eye look is going to stand out. I really want to start deepening up that crease. So I'm going to take this brown shade here mixed with the dark maroon shade. I'm going to mix them together and apply that in like the outer corner and the crease. The brush that I'm using this time is the Zoeva 231 Luxe Petite Crease Brush. 
I'm sort of just doing little circular motions in like my outer V and then once I've blended that out to how I like it then I'll start kind of taking it more into my crease. As you start using darker colors you don't want to take them up as high so that you still have like a transition from your lighter shade to darkest as you get like down closer to the lid. You want to make sure you're not just going over the top and all your colors are sort of ending up in just one little blended mess of all the different colors. And then once again, just going to go back in with that blending brush and just blend out those edges so that there's no harsh lines. My biggest makeup inspiration has been Makeup With Jar for quite some time now. If you guys don't follow her, I highly recommend to follow her. I'm pretty sure she lives in Sydney, um, but she is a Kiwi girl and she is just so amazing with makeup so like pretty much every look I do lately is like inspired by her. The last shade that I'm going to take before I do my cut crease is just this really dark almost black sort of a colour. I don't think it's actually a black but it looks like a really dark black greyish colour so I'm going to take that and just pat it a little bit on my outer corner. Not really taking this into the actual crease this time, I'm just kind of got to pat it there. Now I'm just going to start working on the cut crease, so I'm just taking a brush that is shaped like this. I'm sorry I can't do close-ups of products at the moment because my camera isn't auto-focusing, which is really annoying. But it's just basically like a brush that's quite, I don't know, it's like sort of rounded at the top but flat. So I'm going to start by just kind of like patting this on, on my lid area, so I'm just going to like cut out. The neater you can get this part, the better. It does take some practice. I still don't get mine perfect, but I still give it a go. Once I've done the concealer, I kind of just let it sit there for about a minute, sort of looking down so it can set a little bit. And then I'm just going to go in with any really light eyeshadow, like pretty much the widest eyeshadow I've got, and I'll just gently pat over that to set it before I apply some glitter on top. Fully aware that I've got a stack load of fallout under my eyes, but we will fix that later. So now I'm just going to go in with the lightest shade from the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette, and I'm just going to pat that over where I put the concealer just really gently to set it before I put the glitter on. If you're like me and you can't get your cut crease looking perfect along here, what I'm going to do is just go on with the darker colours that I use from this palette, this time using a Morphe M508 brush, and I'm just kind of going to draw just to tidy it up just a little bit, sort of go over the edges of the concealer where it's not looking perfect. So again, you just want to be looking down into your mirror so that there's no creases on your eyelid and you can easily just touch it up. I've got a little towel that I kind of just rub my brushes on to get rid of any excess colour that I've got on there. And I just missed it and rubbed my brush all over my Duna cover. The next step that I'm going to do is my absolute favourite step. So I'm going to be using the Stila Magnificent Metals Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow. I'm really disappointed because I got another one of these because I love this one. So I got it in another colour and I hate it. The other colour is the gold one. And the thing that I like about this one is it's so pigmented. Like it's almost got a solid background colour but full of glitter. The gold one is like clear with chunks of glitter in it, so it's not like really chunky gold. Like it's just a really, I don't know, it's clear with little specks of glitter in it. And it's just not as hectic and intense as this one. I'm just going to basically apply the Stila glitter all over where I put that concealer. And again, what you want to be doing is looking down into your mirror and start painting that on. Now that I've let that glitter dry a little bit, I really should clean up under my eyes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort that out after I do my wing liner, I think. Um, anyway, now that I've let that glitter set on my eyes, I'm gonna go in with this shade here. So it's a really shimmery, glittery shade from the same Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. I'm gonna take that on my Morphe M508 brush. Gosh, the lighting is changing like crazy at the moment. Anyway, so I'm gonna do that color on like an angle coming back this way towards like my nose, I guess. And I'm also going to do a little bit of that just in the inner corner. Pretty happy with how that's looking. My camera lighting, the outside lighting is changing so much and it's really driving me nuts. I'm going to go and fix this fallout under my eyes and then we'll come back and do my winged liner. So I'm using my Inglot gel liner in the number 77. Sometimes my liner comes out good, sometimes it doesn't. So all I kind of do is put some of the product into the lid and then I just brush back and forward to make sure that I have a solid like point kind of on the end of my little brush.
that's a fail. The one thing I will say about the Inglot gel liner is if you get it in the wrong place, it's so hard to tidy up because it's like waterproof. So I'm gonna run to the bathroom and fix up what we've got going on here. Um, then I'll do my other eye and then I'll be right back. Okay, so my wing liner is now done. I give myself 110% for effort, but they are so far from perfect. Now I'm just gonna go in with some shape tape underneath to conceal under that liner. This gives the illusion that I'm really good at doing liner when I'm not. And then I just kind of blend that downwards, that concealer. Now I'm just gonna apply some mascara. I did just put some glue on my lashes so that while I'm doing my mascara, they can dry. The mascara that I'm using is the Rimmel Scandalize Mascara. This is so pretty. It's probably not gonna go on as nicely right now because I did just get a whole lot of waterproof gel eyeliner stuck in my eyelashes, but it'll just help my natural lashes blend into the false lashes when I put them on. While those lashes are still drying, I'm just going to go back into the Morphe palette and use the second shade in here. And I'm just going to highlight under my brow bone. I just finished putting my lashes on, so they are the Illusion ones, which are my new favourite from EXO Beauty. Honestly, they're my most favourite lashes and they're so super full and dramatic. Now that they are on, I'm going to go in and do my foundation. You know how people are doing those challenges where they mix like all of their foundations together? I don't know, it's like this big challenge thing going around YouTube. Well, I kind of do that every single time I do my makeup. So I mix these three foundations here. Um, the ones that I mix is the NARS Sheer Glow. This one's in the shade Medium for Barcelona. I also mix the Maybelline 24 Hour Superstay Full Coverage Foundation. This one is in the shade 58 True Caramel. Just where I need a little bit of extra coverage, I use the Hourglass Stick in the shade Beige. So I kind of focus the product like in the middle of my forehead and then I blend it out towards my hairline, trying not to get any like big chunks of foundation in my actual hairline. Before I do this part of my face here, what I'm gonna do is just grab this powder mineral foundation. So this is from Vanity and it's in the shade Sand. What I do is I pat a little bit of this into the lid and I do it on my neck because I don't like putting a really full coverage thick foundation down my neck. It just doesn't look very flattering. This is honestly my new favorite powder foundation, but it's really good on days when I don't want to wear makeup that feels really thick and cakey on my face. This still gives you a really good coverage for a powder foundation. But I'm just going to use that down my neck. Oh, I just realized I have a big chunk of foundation right here. So that is done. That's just added like a little bit of coverage to my neck so that my foundation can like blend down a little bit nicer. These give such a beautiful coverage when they're mixed together. The Maybelline is honestly probably the best drugstore foundation on the market at the moment. It sucks that in Australia it's so expensive. Like it's still like $30 or something like that. $30 or $35. Now you guys don't need to do this step at all. But I like to do it just to add a little bit of extra coverage and dewiness to my foundation. I just applied some of the Hourglass Vanish Stick to my cheeks, my forehead and like a tiny bit on my nose. I just really like the way that it looks on my skin. It's so super pretty. So I'm just going to kind of pat that to blend it out. So now what I'm going to do is go in with my Tarte Shape Tape that's almost empty and I'm really sad about that. I'm going to apply a little bit of this to under my eyes. And then just grab my damp beauty blender and start blending that out. So I did just run out of my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and that's what I normally use. I can't justify spending another $60 purchasing another one, so I was looking for like a drugstore alternative. I was in Priceline, I pretty much found any translucent powder I could and just quickly jumped on Google to see what the reviews were basically like about any of the other products and I found this Astralis Ready Set Go Finishing Powder in True Translucent. I've noticed like, you know when you put a magnet the wrong way around and it's not going to attract the other magnet and everything kind of just goes away from it? That's how it feels like when you put something in here to try and get it on your face. It's like the powder just tries to move away from the brush or like from the beauty blender that you're putting in here. Like I'm gonna just pack this under my eye. Whoa, I'm getting so much powder everywhere. I'm just going to grab a different brush and kind of just dust off any excess powder. So I'm just going to finish under my eyes now. I'm going to do some black in my waterline using my Essence Long Lasting Eye Pencil in 01 Black Fever. So I'm just taking that dark shade from the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette, the darkest one that's like nearly black. And this is on my Morphe M508 brush. I'm going to go in with a mix of these two shades here now, I think. 
I will say that I don't think the colors are going on as like smoothly under my eye since I set it with that Australis powder. Like they're kind of going on a little bit patchy under my eyes and I'm pretty sure it's related to that powder because I never have this issue. So now I'm going to do my mascara on my bottom lashes just using the same mascara that I used before. Just to make my inner corner pop a little bit more, I'm going to use this. I use it in pretty much every single video. It's the Vanity Mineral Color Crystals in the shade White Satin. So I just put a little bit into the lid. Um, put some on the brush and just kind of tap it off to make sure it's not too hectic. Now what I'm going to do before I start contouring my face is I'm just going to go into this powder here. Hourglass Ambient Luminous Light. I'm losing my voice again. I don't know what's going on. Just kind of going to place that in the center of my forehead and then on my cheek where I would put my highlight. I like doing this before I contour because I just feel like it makes it look like my glow is like natural and it comes from within and it's not just placed on top of a whole lot of other products. And then once I've done that, I go in with my MAC Give Me Sun powder um, and then I just use the little contour brush that came with my Benefit Hula and start doing that on my cheekbone. So you're kind of going in an angle from the top of your ear to the corner of your mouth, but don't take it all the way down there because you end up looking like a skeleton. I also bring that in my temple area and sort of up onto my forehead. This MAC Give Me Sun has lasted me such a long time. I've probably had it for over a year now, and I feel like there's still heaps of product to be used in the pan. I also bring a little bit of that down the sides of my nose and then underneath my nose as well. I also do it underneath my lip. I'm not really a huge fan of blush lately, but I'm still going to go in with my 10 Satin Coral and just apply a really small amount of that to the apples of my cheeks. Now it's time to highlight my face. So as usual, I'm going to go into my Anastasia Beverly Hills Sun Dipped Glow Kit. I'm going to do a mix of... I can't even open it. I'm going to do a mix of these two shades here. Um, and the brush that I'm using is my Real Techniques Setting Brush. I'm really loving these really dramatic full glam makeup looks at the moment. I always like to just touch up my brows when I'm kind of near the end of my makeup look. So I have no more extra powders or anything to apply to my face right now. So this is just a little essence brow powder. My favorite lipstick now is the Jeffree Star Androgyny. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. I've been pulled up on this before on my channel. But we're going to go with Jeffree Star Androgyny. So this is the completed makeup look. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you guys want to see some more really full glam, dramatic makeup looks on my channel using like a whole range of different colors, then just comment that down below because honestly, I would love to create some more full glam makeup looks if that's what you guys are into. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, like usual, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in my next video.